sure my sound is off. Oh yeah. That's a reminder. You're welcome. Okay. Welcome everyone. Uh, oh, there's some notifications of it. Okay. Just want to be sure that I've got everything set up and everyone and I just need to also find find this myself right now. <laughs> but welcome. And thank you so much, Silken and Brian. It is uh, it is wonderful to. Uh, I just need to also find oh, find this much volume. <laughs> we got a few people joining us now. That's great. It, and it was, as I was saying, thank you to Silken and Brian for that uh, for that prelude. It, uh, it's wonderful to uh, see the sanctuary and hear the organ, and in particular hear Silken playing the organ. Um, I do want to express my gratitude to Gail for providing uh, our prelude for the last several weeks uh, while we weren't able to make use of the sanctuary. But it's great to have this back of ours, and uh, I can see a lot of people that are also very happy for that. Um, in any case, welcome. It is the second Sunday of Lent, and I, uh, I welcome you to this uh, time of worship. For those who might be joining for the very first time, uh, my name is Reverend Warner Bloomfield. We gather from our uh, Ellie's in my uh, dining room table for this time of worship. Ellie's got this look well, of concentration. I'm, <laughs> I'm just monitoring it. I'm hoping I've got the right one because it says February 21, Lent 1. Oh, that's, I've made a mistake. Oh, so you just forgot to update it. Yes, I forgot to oh, update that. Okay, so I'm not on the wrong no, feed. Okay. No, I should maybe go in and change that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just, oh, I apologize, because that, that, that's going to confuse a lot of people. That could really confuse people, especially yeah. if they're looking later on the website. Yes, exactly. So I'm just going to make a quick change there. I apologize, everyone. Um, I'm glad that Ellie caught that. And, uh, yeah. And transition. There, have we got to change? It should show up eventually. But there. Um, I think we're ready to go now. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a, one of those weeks where things get dropped. In any case, welcome. And I think we're ready to go now. Um, this, that's, my, that's my welcome and my greeting for you. Uh, now, if there's any announcements or anything that people wish to share, I certainly would uh, invite you to, uh, to put those into your comments and uh, in, in, into the comments and so we can see. Um, and in the meantime, as uh, we take this time for sharing, let us uh, listen to this offering of music from Gail. I'm so sorry. It's one of those days where, <laughs> where technology is not really being okay, friendly. Oh, it's better than Thursday night's well, technology. Well, <laughs> yes.
and thank you for that, Gail. Um, I'm not I'm not seeing any uh, announcements coming up there or sharing. I would like to uh, remind people that uh, we continue through Lent and uh, our, the Lenten luxuries uh, are where we encourage people to uh, to take a look at, at those. And uh, I haven't looked to see what today's is, but uh, oh, it's been tuning in. Oh, still tuning in. Every Sunday. Every Sunday yeah. is a uh, is a uh, gratitude for being able to tune in for this time of worship. There we go. All right, and uh, I just uh, would like to share. I uh, got an email from Gwen this weekend, and that uh, her that Charlie is uh, seems to be. Really, he's been getting uh, positive uh, reports in terms of uh, his recovery from his surgery. And uh, so we're certainly gra grateful for that. And uh, they're very appreciative of uh, the prayers and concern that we have uh, offered. As we uh, continue in, into our time of worship, let us uh, light our candle. And as we do so, join in singing, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. We who fear the marvels of creation have come to praise the Creator. Our Creator does not hide from the hardship and suffering of our world. In the midst of suffering, our Creator finds ways to satisfy the hungry and provide deliverance to the oppressed. From generation to generation, we come to celebrate our Creator who seeks goodness for all creation. And let us pray. Blessed Creator, from generation to generation, we bless your holy name and marvel at the magnificent things that you have done. We offer you our gratitude and praise through today's worship. May it please you. We ask that your Holy Spirit intercede on our behalf when we struggle to articulate how much you truly mean to us and how grateful we are for this time together. Amen. Amen. And our opening hymn is one we haven't sung in a while, but uh, it's one I, I quite like. And uh, so we thought we would sing this this morning. Um, it's number 588 in Voices United. Many are the light beams. Of 
take time now for our prayer of confession as we bring before God uh, our struggles, but at the same time acknowledging that God's love continues and that we can always turn to God, knowing God is there, welcoming us and embracing us. Let us pray. Creator God, forgive us for the many ways we try to profit by the world's standards, seeking fame over pride wealth over integrity, comfort over justice. Hold us to a higher standard where we weigh hope over fear, love over indifference, and divine things over human things. Have mercy on us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And remember, God's goodness is forever, and God's mercies will always endure. Now I need to set this up. We, are, we, we have a ministry of music from uh, Reverend Brian Howell this morning and uh, he certainly had some fun with this and I think you will enjoy it. Good morning. Two things I wanted to mention before I start this song. Uh, the first is please forgive the hat. Um, the way the lights are in this room, it just was reflecting off my head and that was really all you could see, so this seemed to be my best option. Um, secondly, uh, the, the song hymn that I'm going to share with you is one that is, I think, familiar to everyone. Um, it's one that we haven't probably sung much in the last year because the words don't really sync with our lives as they are today. So. I took the liberty of changing some of the words and adding a verse, and um, so we'll just see how that goes. Please feel free to uh, hum sing along if you wish. Stay. Thank you. 
Unmuted the wrong phone, the wrong microphone. <laughs> there, I think we're set now. Um, make sure that meter too. I having some troubles with with all everything apparently this morning. Anyways, thank you, Brian. That was wonderful, and I'm sure everyone got a great kick out of that. Um, making again, taking one quick look to be sure. Yes, I have all. It looks like I have all the microphones the way they're supposed to be now. <laughs> the first scripture reading this morning is from uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 17. Covenant with Abraham and Sarah. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And then God said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her and she shall give rise to nations of kings, of people shall come from her. And I also read from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed after three days, killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. May these words be blessed to our understanding. And we have another video. 
another story based on scripture today. And this one is read by Emerson. Sorry about that, folks. I understand the audio is choppy, like it's in slow motion. I'm going to try again with that and see what happens. Um, I, it's, I don't know. It looked okay on my... I can't, I can't hear it right now with the way things are set up, so I'm just relying on you. I'm going to try playing it again, but maybe it's just not going to work today. And for that, I apologize. Certainly apologize to Emerson. We were looking forward to that. But let's see what happens. that's not going to work today. I am so sorry. It, uh, that's, that's a disappointment. That's all I can say. And it is, I think it was, it, I don't know how to fix that right now in this particular moment. So I, we're just going to have to forego that. And uh, went through an awful lot of work trying to get that onto the computer today, yeah, last night. So that's really unfortunate. But uh, I'm going to continue on I, with that with my service and so better luck next time and we will try for something we'll try again with it again i'll see what i can do about maybe loading that uh, that that uh, story onto our facebook page later on today so that people can see it um, but right now until i get that fixed we will continue on and with my time of my message Yes, and it was great to see Emerson reading. And so, like I said, hopefully we can get that uh, onto the Facebook page in a way that everybody can appreciate later on today. When you consider Jesus' words this morning, that to follow him means to carry your cross, what comes to mind? I will admit that for me, for a long time, this was a, a warning of the threat of violence, the, the need for sacrifice, and that being a disciple of Jesus was a dangerous thing. And for his disciples, this was certainly the case. But I think that limiting that statement to that view is not fair either. I fear it allows us as Christians to view ourselves as victims of needing to suffer for our faith. 
Are there Christians who are persecuted? Yes, absolutely. If you look to the Middle East and parts of Africa and other parts of the world, there are certainly Christian communities under attack. But if we are honest, Christianity in North America is a long way from being persecuted. We really don't suffer as a consequence of our faith. So I think we need to investigate a little closer what carrying the cross might mean in our context. So, how many of you remember my reflection from about a month ago when I described my call to ministry and how it played out? I didn't tell the whole story. There was another side to that story, but I needed her permission before I told it. And that is Ellie's reaction when I told Ellie that I thought I was being called to ministry. She laughs now. But at that moment, her first words to me as we began this conversation in our kitchen, in uh, the home we had in Dryden, we seem to have a lot of conversations uh, in our kitchen. Anyways, her first words at that point were, I just planted perennials. See, I was pretty sure we had a few years, perhaps many in Dryden. I was not even sure of if this particular path I was looking to head down was going to end any differently than my exploration of other careers, such as teaching or public relations. Nothing seemed terribly certain for me yet, but Ellie had little doubt from the moment I broached the subject. It was time to prepare for the inevitable move. And the loss of her perennials certainly felt like a bit of a sacrifice, I'm sure. Of course, that move didn't come about for another 10 years or so. There was a year of discernment, and there were three years of me studying online, and another year of me living in Saskatchewan, and then five years splitting time between Dryden and Sula Kaut. Life changed. We changed. Quite often when we talk about God's covenants, we discuss God's covenant with Abraham. And we forget it is a covenant with both Abraham and Sarah. Both people experience a name change. Abram becomes Abraham and Sarah becomes Sarah. God doesn't call Abraham all by himself. It is Abram and Sarah. Sari is just as much a part of this endeavor. God calls this couple with their strength and their courage and their commitment. But God also calls them knowing they are flawed people. They are capable of acting from fear and jealousy and self-interest. This is not a perfect and blameless pair. But God still sees them and also Sarah's servant, Hagar as people worthy of fulfilling God's promise to parent many nations. God does not look for flawless people to carry out the work of creating a new world. God sees us for what we are capable of doing. God recognizes what we can do better than we ourselves can comprehend. This theme keeps coming up in Hebrew scripture. The people, the people, God works through to lead the people of Israel as they come to be known are remarkable for their faith and their courage, but also for their capacity for deceit, for their greed and jealousy and the potential of their anger. And yet God keeps turning to these people, choosing them, loving them and walking with them. Why would we think we are not up for receiving God's call to be chosen for something new? But in recognizing that, we must also accept we are also apt to be transformed in some way. On answering God's call, on receiving God's promise, Abram and Sarah become Abraham and Sarah, as we've said. 
Jesus tells his disciples that to follow him on his road to Jerusalem means they must be prepared to carry their cross. That can seem a grim image, to carry a cross. It's natural to view that cross as an image of death and suffering. So much of that is bound up in that image. Who wants that? But you see, about the only thing we can know for certain in our life is that we will die. Many Christian traditions recognize Ash Wednesday when they place ash from the previous year's palm branches on their foreheads. And part of that ritual is words noting that from ashes we are born and to ashes we return. It is an acknowledgement of our mortality. Furthermore, we all will experience suffering of one form or another in our lives. Our journey through life takes us through many hills and valleys. So to say we we are called to carry a cross is, I think, to accept that we will die. But we do so in the knowledge Christ is with us. It is to know that we will die with Christ and are reborn into something new. To carry the cross is to also know we are a resurrection people. We journey with the knowledge of God's many covenants to journey with us and with the promise of a new life. We can journey with Jesus and not be dominated by the fear of our death. It it doesn't mean we give up and we put behind us the fear of dying. Again, that's natural, but we are not dominated by it. We are not paralyzed by fear of the life before us, but we embrace what God has chosen for us to do. We choose to live fully into the moments that are put before us. We can find the strength to stand up for what is right offer our voice to those who are silenced, and offer our compassion and our kindness to those who are left alone. God chooses us each at some point to take on new challenges, to travel new roads. In our glimpses of what that might mean for us, we can be left afraid of how that might change us or shake us out of our comfortable lives. That moment can leave us saying goodbye to the perennials we look forward to watching grow. But God also calls us to fully live in the moments we encounter, to work with God in creating something new and magnificent, and to take on those moments knowing God journeys with us, guiding us, and revealing just what we are so capable of doing. For that we say, thanks be to God. Amen. And there it is. All my papers got mixed up. I apologize. Let us take time for reflection and song once more as we take in in you there is a refuge Gail will play it through a few times and then we'll join in singing number 84 and more voices
that happens again. <laughs> Technology is not our friend this morning. <laughs> that did not happen during our run through prior to worship. So we're not sure what's happening. I don't think it's that big a problem. Can't we keep going? I want to sing this. <laughs> Ellie wants to keep going. Are you okay with Well, well it'll, I'm not going to wait for you to <laughs> see this. So. Having one of those mornings, but we continue. So we're not going to sing though. It's, uh, do you want to try and sing this a cappella? No. Okay. <laughs> I've had it with this. No. <laughs> uh oh. <sighs> Let's pray. <laughs> Good idea. And we might be singing Be Thou My Vision. A cappella again. If we must, we must. We will. It'll be okay. We did it on th Thursday night. Yeah. Okay. The rehearsals always go perfectly. Yes. We. This was. This was not an issue during our uh, run through of this of the music uh, before worship. Alas. Enough of that. Let us pray. So we bring before God our gratitude and our prayers of concern that we do so as a community of faith offering our prayers for the people within this community as well as for the wider community of which we are a part. Let us pray. Loving parent, hoping against hope, we come to you in prayer expecting that you will use our desires to call into existence things that do not yet exist in our world, but are plentiful in yours. We dream of a just peace in places stricken by oppression and violence. We dream of loving kindness among people afflicted by prejudice and hate. We dream of abundant life in communities suffering from generational trauma. We dream of healing mercies in people living with devastating illness. We dream of your reign here on earth as it is in heaven. Healing God, we offer our prayers for those we know who are ill and those who are in pain. We pray for those living with anxiety and with fear for what today and tomorrow and the day after tomorrow might bring them. May they find security and peace and comfort in your presence. Loving God, we pray for those who are lonely, those who are alone, for those recovering from illness and medical treatments, those struggling with the news of diagnoses and operations yet to come. May they know your peace. May they know your friendship and may they experience your care and compassion through those who are with them, journeying with them and caring for them. All this we pray. In the name of Jesus the Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen.
I'm going to just try one. I'm going to take out the CD and put yep. it back in. And okay. We're going to see what we can do to, before we start our... Because that, uh, that was a brand new problem. Yeah, it's brand new. <laughs> That's number five on the CD. Okay. Because I love what Gail has done. She's got yes. a violin. <laughs> so this is number 642 in Voices United. Fingers crossed as we sing. We're just going to sing it a cappella. Okay. <laughs> That's really unfortunate. What, what a morning we're having. Everybody, sing loud. <laughs> <laughs> you, can over, you can overwhelm Ellie and I. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. All right. Be thou my vision, O joy of my heart. Not be all else to me, save for that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Are you comfortable in that key? I think so. Okay. Be thou my wisdom, my calm in all strife. I ever with thee, and thou in my life. Thou loving parent, thy child may I be. Thou in me dwelling, and I one with thee. Be thou my battle shield, sword for the fight. Be thou my dignity, thou my delight. Thou my soul shelter, Thou my high tower, raise thou me heavenward, O power of my power. Riches I heed not, nor vain empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. bring this time of worship to a close <laughs> and I thank you for your patience and your commitment to this time of worship it is uh, so much appreciated and I'm hoping that you're also able to participate with us in this with a, a sense of humor <laughs> and graciousness before we enter into may God's sheltering wings I offer you this blessing. 
May the God of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar bless you. May the goodness of this blessing live on in the lives and ministries of future generations. And may your blessing give rise to nations of peace, communities of love. And so, as we prepare to go forth, let us join in singing a cappella. <laughs> may God's sheltering wings. Hopefully I can remember the tune enough as we sing this. May God sheltering. No, no, no. What? <laughs> we have to be in the same key. Okay, go ahead. You start. <laughs> okay. May God sheltering wings, her gathering wings protect you. May God's nurturing arms, her cradling arms sustain you and hold you in her love and hold you in her love may god's sheltering wings his gathering wings protect you may god's nurturing arms her scaling arms sustain you and hold you in his love and hold you in his love amen and so i thank you and now i have a few projects for the next couple of days as i try to sort out what all just went on today and uh, I hope that as you go forth with the rest of you, your day you go forth knowing that God walks with you strengthening you caring for you and offering you peace and until we gather again go knowing that God is with you Amen Amen